Hi, welcome to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. Behind me I have a Honda Izzy lawnmower. Now this lawnmower actually starts and runs fine when it's running at full revs, but as soon as you take it down to idle, this thing revs up and down. I'll show you exactly what it does in a minute. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is help anybody out who has a Honda lawnmower that starts and runs fine, but it kind of revs up and down and won't idle properly. This is usually a classic sign of two things. It either wants the carburetor servicing or it could want the valve setting as well. So I'll take this camera off the tripod and I'll show you exactly how this lawnmower's running before we start any work. If you haven't done already, be sure to subscribe and tick the bell notification icon. That way I can keep you up to date on all future videos that are coming up on the channel. And be sure to check out my new website as well, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. Got my own parts store on there and about 35 helpful articles as well. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is a Honda Easy Lawnmower. This is my absolute favourite type of lawnmower. Really good solid deck, start and run, fantastic. Usually first pull and should idle perfectly at the slowest revs. If they're set up properly, these actually idle really slowly and that's how you know everything's running perfectly. So for now, I'm just going to start this up and run it at full speed then I'm going to slow it down and show you exactly what's happening with this. Uh, apologies for the wind, it is a little bit windy today. There's not a lot I can do about that. So if you've got one of these, I'm going to make sure you turn this fuel tap on here. Put this on to choke, and we'll just pull this over. So obviously that sounds as if it's running fantastic. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually slow this down here. See on the green throttle lever at the top, I'm actually going to slow that down once I've got this started. And you'll see how, how this isn't running properly. Now most Honda lawnmowers like that, is it there, anything with that GCV 135 or 160 engine would normally run really really well actually, even at uh, really slow revs as well. So I'm going to put this on the bench and we're going to take a look at the carburetor. I'm going to show you all the uh, linkages and spring setups as well for anyone who's had a mess about with this and taken it apart. And we may have to take a look at the valves, but if I don't, just look in the description of this video and I will link to a video that I've done showing you exactly how to set uh, valves on these overhead cam lawnmowers as well. So be sure to check out the description of the video as well. So the first thing we're going to do with this is I'm going to remove this spark plug lead here which is off there. I always do that with every repair no matter what I'm doing and should do the same as well. I'm going to just remove this air filter box here and take this dirty old air filter out. Now there's um, not many occasions with these where something's actually gone wrong with these springs or the linkage configurations. It's usually that the carburetor wants servicing or the valves want sorting out. But I've actually written a, 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 it's a massive article actually on repair lawnmowers for profit.com. I've actually written a massive article on how to service Honda lawnmowers. So if you look in the top right hand corner of your screen now, you'll see a link to the website where you can actually see the article. But um, for now, I've got uh, low flying aircraft coming over. I'm going to get some tools. I'm going to take this air filter box off and we'll take this carburetor off and we'll give this a service and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to try this lawnmower again and see if it idles properly and I, I'm imagining it probably will but if it doesn't we'll set the valve so I'm going to get a 10mm socket we're going to take this air filter box off and take this carburetor off and one advantage of these Honda lawnmowers is it's actually got this fuel tap on here so I can just turn that off and that saves a load of mess as well that's really good that saves me having to clamp the fuel line and all everything else I would usually have to do so that's off, there'll be a bit of fuel in the carburetor but we shouldn't make too much of a mess so let's take this air filter box off when you undo these two parts these bolts actually run right through this air filter box right through the carburetor and right into the engine through all the gaskets and everything so the problem with this, if it is a problem is that when you undo these two parts everything can drop down and you can get fuel spilling out the carburetor because if it's not level it starts to pile out the back of it and all sorts of bits so I'm going to take these off real slowly I'm going to try and hold the carburetor with my fingers underneath and just hold everything in position I'll pull that one out I'm not sure if I can just get that one yet I should really have a little uh, electric screwdriver or an impact or something on here just to make it quicker but I'm just so used to doing it like this I'll take that off there and I've got hold of the carburetor from the bottom underneath. I move this out of the way. The breather pipe on the back. So if I have to pull that off, 
you see the gasket there see that breather pipe that has to connect to the back of the air filter box when you put it back on I don't want to lose that gasket either so I'm going to carefully take that off and you can see I've got hold of everything here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just remove this start recoil which I probably should have done at the beginning just so I can show anybody who's taken this lawnmower apart the actual configuration of the springs and the linkages from the top it's really simple to take these off these uh, recoils off these Hondas as well you just basically undo these three parts see it's, it's even easier than the Briggs and Strap ones to be honest with you you just take this off you should always really do this I probably should have done this at the beginning but uh, it's kind of just so easy to do it you can actually get in take the whole thing off as well take this recoil off and so only take this top part off of course I, like to, I always do this anyway so I always like to just spray the underside of these up this has been sat for a long time I bought this from a, a lady in a village called Tadcaster it's been sat outside for ages so I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to spray around the inside of here you can see from here I can lift this up make sure you don't lose these parts see these little gold parts here these like spaces I'm not sure what you call them I can't remember now take that off and you can move it out the way and you can see there at the back you still got this fuel line connected it's not going to spill out it's nice to clamp on there and that gives me access to the top of this lawnmower here where I can see absolutely everything I might need to see and I can film everything as well and take photographs before I start stripping this down and putting it back together so for anyone who's uh, got one of these and someone's taken the carb off there should be a little um, gasket in here it's like a spacer I once when I first started doing this bought one didn't have that spacer on and I couldn't work out why the, uh, the configuration the linkages wouldn't all move about and stuff so um, I just want to show this actually you see this little part here I get loads of questions about Mountfield SV150 engines this little part under here should have a spring on at least on the SV50 it should, and this spring breaks because it's really small and this is what actually governs it on an SV150 engine so if you've got an SV150 and it's not idling properly you might want to check the little spring that runs around this kind of mechanism here so all you've got with this is two of these governor rods or connecting rods should I say the, um, you've got some rods at the back this here that goes to this governor arm at the back this is a governor arm see here that's your governor arm and take these uh, these rods off here and unhook it I should be able to take this carburetor off and we should be able to service this so I'm going to put this camera back on the tripod and I'm going to unhook these linkages here from this carburetor once I've taken a few photographs of exactly where everything is it looks so straightforward but once you take things apart something else comes off with it and you get into all sorts of mess so most people have got a mobile phone now so I do strongly suggest taking some photographs even if you think you can remember where it all goes just remember as well I'm just about to do this one small tip if you can't get these uh, connecting rods off here you can actually back this off here and it moves this whole control arm this whole arm here this whole bracket out the way and it gives you a lot more access to get in for now I'm just going to try and unhook it without doing it but if you can't do it just un unhook this and this all slides out the way it just gives you a bit more access so I'm just going to try and unhook it without doing it and if I don't do it I'll just um, I'll slacken that off a little bit and I'll unhook it using that method the reason I'm not doing that is because I never like to take anything off that I don't want to have to put back on I like to just try and unhook things but um, let's have a little mess about in here let's put some other gloves on I'm sick of going back in the house and having my hands covered in petrol so that, that unhooks like that one once you take things off you see this rod, this connecting rod could actually fall out and you could forget kind of which end it went in anything could you know potentially happen so we'll take that out there I'll take this off here see and then you've got this tiny little governor spring that hooks to the back be real careful with this because you don't want to lose the, uh, the bend off the end of it as well I'll unhook that and try and keep it all as together as I can without moving too many things now as you can see I've got this carburetor off we can service this carb up so I have an air compressor what I do is I just um, spray this up on the outside some bit of clean, a bit of WD-40 or anything, carb spray would be ideal. And I've got an airline here, and I'm just going to blow all the dirt off the outside of this carburetor here. The idea of doing that on the outside is so when you take the actual bowl off, you're not transferring any dirt from the outside to the inside of the carburetor. So I'm just going to blow all this off now before we open this carburetor up and service it. So while I'm out here and I've got my camera filming everything, I might as well show you how to service the carburetor on a Honda petrol lawnmower. So get yourself a tub. Just put your carb in it, that way you can't lose any bits or any springs. I'm just going to take the bowl off in the bottom, be really careful. 
with this bolt at the bottom, you see this one here, especially when you put it back on, these are really easy to cross thread. Someone was looking for a Tecumseh one of these the other day and I think it was about £30 just for that part. So be really careful, you're going to get some fuel drop out. I'm going to take this off in a second, that's really stiff. It's actually a washer there, I nearly lost that. I'm not sure why that's not coming off, that should come off very, very tight. I'll try and do this other one, but I'm pretty sure that's just a, like a drain bowl. There we go. Didn't need to come off, didn't think so, but it's helped me get that off. And we'll dump out any old fuel here. So what you can see now, you can see here I've got this retaining pin. I'm going to take this pin out. Be real careful when you're doing everything, because when I take this float out, this white part's the float, when I take this out in a minute, what you're going to see underneath here is there's actually a needle and it's probably got a spring attached to it. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. You can see when I've taken that float out, there's actually a needle. Watch. See that drop out? And that's dropped out as well. That's the part that you don't want to lose. So what we need to do now is get this main jet out of here. What you need to do with this here is get a flat headed screwdriver and actually unscrew this main jet. And two parts will drop out of this carburetor. They've got tiny little like pin holes in. And if they're not completely clean, it will get a good fuel flow, and that's the problem that you can have when it'll run okay, but not idle properly, it needs to be absolutely perfect. There's also tiny little holes in the back of carburetors, such as in this part here, which is the reason you need to spray it all up with carb spray and blow it all out with a compressor. If you don't have a compressor, get yourself a can of air duster, it does exactly the same thing. So I'm going to go get a flat-headed screwdriver, and I'm going to take out this main jet from inside this Honda carburetor. I actually have a little box here, this is a, what I call my useful box, this is sort of stuff I never think I'll need but I always end up using, I've just ended up piling it all in the same box to save a bit of time so I, I'm going to get this screwdriver here carefully, it's actually got a cut out, you can actually undo this jet and it'll be in two parts with this, it'll be a longer part and a shorter part but you must take this out to clean the carburetor, to clean it out properly because these are the parts that get clogged up and stop it running correctly so we'll have one part that should drop out there Slightly stuck there. Maybe just some backs it off far enough. If it does get stuck like that, if you do have a problem, in fact I'll show you now, I'll lock will probably get that out. If you actually get an Allen key, you can hook it in from the top. I'm not sure if you can just see in there, there's actually the top, like the brass part there of this actual jet. If you get an Allen key you can actually put this down from the top. I'll show you how to do that now. You just get a, an Allen key like this, just poke it in from the top like there, push it and it'll push it down. If you still don't come down, which it's done with this one, get a smaller Allen key and just keep going basically. If I kept tapping that it would come out of the bottom. You can see there it started to come out. You can actually get this out but if you just get smaller ones you can actually push it down until the whole thing just goes in. You can actually just get a hold of it and take this part out. This gasket's not very good either, is it? Look for the other half of that, so I'll have to try it without it. If not, I'm going to have to replace that gasket, which is a bit of a pain. See there? I always film these things. A lot of people would edit that out. Now, you know, you could call me lazy if you want, but I like people to see you know, some of the struggles that I have with things as well. Not everything always goes perfectly well. So, you can see here the part that's dropped out. I'm not sure if you can just tell here, this has got actually tiny, tiny little holes in as well. And it's this that uh, actually transfers the fuel through, sends it through to uh, ignite with a plug. And if you don't get that really fine mist of fuel going through, it won't idle properly. So we've got that out. And the other part that dropped out with it was this other jet as well. You see this part here? You need to make sure visually you can see there's actually a hole there. You need to make sure there's actually daylight through there when you look through it. Make sure everything's clean and tidy. So all we need to do now is get some carburetor spray and spray it absolutely everywhere we can get in all the holes. I'm going to back all these uh, little screws off here. You see this one here? I'm going to take all this off as, as much as I can anywhere I can get in. I'm going to spray this up with carburetor spray and I'm going to leave it for a few minutes and I'm going to blow it all through with the compressor and hopefully when we rebuild this and put this back on this mower it will idle properly. So there's a few parts I'm going to take off this. I don't want to take this part off here because this is set. This is kind of um, got a gauge or a setting on it. This is, I don't want to back this out too far. I've seen people break these off and take it out to clean it. But this is the um, this is your idle speed screw, and that's if you look at that, that's that's through kind of about 
I don't know, three threads through there. So I'm going to take that off and the reason for taking it off is I want to get to this one below it so I can clean inside here as well. So I'm just going to back this off and I'm going to take this part off as well. I like to be able to get in and clean every part that, that could potentially be causing a problem. So I don't need to take that part off, that doesn't give me access to anything else inside the carburetor but it does, don't lose that screw by the way, uh, that spring by the way uh, and then I'm going to take this one off here and that will give me the uh, access I need to get some carb spray down here and just clean everything off so we'll take that out as well you can see in there, there's actually a little hole in there as well so I don't actually want to be able to take this apart without actually being able to clean in here as well so get yourself some carb spray, I've used this for a, a long time now this, this stuff I need some more actually, there's not a lot just spraying everywhere you can get in every little hole, every little bit you can get to all the parts inside here I'm going to do inside all these holes do all these little bits right round the whole thing even inside this bowl here and then I'm just going to blow all this through with my compressor make absolutely sure that you do all these tiny little holes in here with some carb spray and blow them out make sure you can see through them as well make sure there's no blockages whatsoever and we'll put this back together so I've sprayed all these parts up, they've been sat 5-10 minutes, I'm just going to get my compressor and I'm going to blow through all the holes, everything I can get through all these little bits and dry it all off completely including this uh, this bowl as well, it's actually quite clean and tidy in there now, it was a little bit of a mess and I'm going to put this back together, I'll show you how to reassemble this as well it's obviously it's just the uh, reverse of what we did before but I'll show you how to do it while I've got the camera out ok so now this is dried off, I'm going to put this back together and start by putting this jet in here, you see this little part here the actual thinnest part here goes to the top so you drop that in that way you can see that like that and the next part here goes in, you want to get this the right way around you can see the cut out for where you need to tighten this back up so that's actually got the little cut out on for the screwdriver so obviously that needs to go in that way I'll just tighten this back up, be real careful with all this stuff make sure you don't cross thread anything just be, uh, be careful, make sure, absolutely sure that everything's in as it should be and nothing's going to get broken so we'll just tighten that up and once you've done this on this type of lawnmower, it's very similar on uh, on any other type of lawnmower with a bowl style carburetor I always describe them as bowl style carburetors because of this the uh, Briggs & Stratton 35 Classics just got like a diaphragm and gasket set so it's a completely different setup so I'm going to put this back in here I'm just going to tighten this up here Put this back through exactly where it was before which was about three threads showing through it's the idle speed i could always alter this once i get this back on this mower it's around about that point that it was through before so i'm going to leave that there and if you're watching this you're probably thinking he's made a mistake here he needs to put this other one back in first and you'd be correct so <laughs> all good fun it's a nice day anyway i don't mind spending another few minutes out here so let me put that one back in Schoolboy error, you might call that, might you? I'll put that one back in, of course, and then we'll put this one back in. All, um, all these cabs have got slightly different setups. They've all got slightly different screws and slightly different um, areas you can get in and clean off. But they all work on the same principle. Take as many parts off as you can and just clean inside everything. Put that back through to there like that. So the next bit's the tricky bit, you've got you actually your, your needle here and this float ball and this is the bit, if you're going to lose a part, this is the part you will lose, this little needle. So on this version here, it just slides in this cut out here. If I tip it upside down like this, you can see how easy it is to fall off. I'm going to get it right in here, and get it sort of balanced so you can just slide this back on. You see that there, I've got that hanging down. If I put that back in there and put that in. This is a attempt two, three, even. Just falls off a lot. It can be a bit of a pain to do this. Sometimes you just get it hanging on. It won't actually fall off, you can see. You have to just hook it in here. And it only just sort of stays on. Hold everything together real carefully. And drop this back down here into where this needle goes. You can see here how it's, uh, how it's hooked in. When you lift this float, up and down this needle should move up and down with it if it doesn't move up and down with it what will happen is when your uh, actual bowl fills up with fuel this needle will actually seat inside here and you'll have a fuel leak so if you've got a carburetor that's leaking it's probably because you haven't got this needle seated correctly inside this carburetor so I need to find this little pin I've got here put this back through 
Oh, let's just get that wiggle through there. There's actually a channel on YouTube, I can't remember what it's called now. And like everything they do just goes like totally perfectly. Can't remember what it's called. And they have like these messages at the beginning saying, you know, where every safety device possible and you know all this kind of stuff and it never shows them like struggling with a pin to get back through here or dropping the uh, needle like, everything's like totally perfect so I always find it quite amusing so when I'm filming these videos I like to kind of film these bits you can see there that took me about 30 seconds to get through there but I like to do this I think this is kind of real life this is what happens when you try and do these things and you can see there so if you can see that needle just moving up and down exactly as I want it to. We must make sure that that's all sat in there correctly. Put this pin back in evenly as well. So I'm going to fit, refit this uh, this ball here. This is your carburetor. You want to make sure that this actual part here, this drain plug here, actually faces the front of your mower as well. Just in case you do need to drill, drain any fuel out of that. So you can see you've got the fuel line there. That will be running back in towards this... Uh, this engine here, what I want to do is spin that round in case I want to drain any fuel off. I'm going to put that at the front. I'm going to carefully get this, uh, this bolt here, put this washer back on. And just hand tight, I'm just going to put this on here. I'm just going to do this by hand and I'm going to make absolutely sure that I don't cross thread this. Because if you do, it will be ruined and you will pay a lot of money just for one of those, as I suggested earlier. So, I've got this all back together tighten that back up everything's clean and tidy and we've got everything set back where it was before I'm actually going to put this back on this mower and we'll try this mower and we'll see exactly how it idles it might have helped and it might not it certainly would have done it any harm and it looked like it wanted servicing just from all the dirt that was on it anyway so we'll put this back on this mower and we'll try it and see if it idles properly now just for anyone struggling as well when I put this back on here as I said you might forget this spring this little spring here at the back, I'm not sure if you can just see that, let me just have a quick look. See this little spring here? Here you can, yeah. That actually hooks in this back hole, the little back hole there, that one goes in there, the spring goes at the back, then the actual connecting rod goes next to it, and the other connecting rod, of course, goes on, on here as well. So this is why I always take photographs of things, and obviously I'm filming this as well, which really helps me. But put the spring in, put this connecting rod in, and hook this back up. So as I said before, I always take photographs, and I'm just wondering which actual part of this carburetor at the front here this connecting rod went back onto this black plastic part here and luckily on my phone I've taken a photograph I can see I'm not sure if it shows up there I actually have photographs of this and it shows exactly where it goes it goes in this part here at the front so I always take photographs it's very very easy to forget let's try hooking this carburetor back on here so I want to start with this back one I want to put this spring on first and hook that through the little hole I'm going to put this back connecting rod on, hook it through. That's two on. I don't like that because it's actually uh, the spring. That's okay, it's sorted itself out. It's gone back around the back there. So that's on there. And then I'm going to hook this one back on, which went on the back, on here. And push that one back through. And then we've got all these connecting rods and springs back on. There's only three on here, which is a. Uh, a real advantage, some older ones and some really badly designed ones if I'm honest have some terrible, terrible spring and linkage configurations that can take ages to do. You must remember to push this fuel line on as well because you'll really struggle under here to get this fuel line on once you've got the air filter box on. See once this air filter box goes back on here you're going to struggle to get under there and push that fuel line on. So I've got everything hooked up exactly as I want, I've got all these connecting rods and this spring at the back right. All the parts are back together. I'm going to push this back in. I've got to put this bad gasket back on, making sure, absolutely sure that this little hole here, everything lines up. Okay, so now I've got all these linkages back on. I've got to remember to put this gasket back on as well. And then actually put this on the back of here. Now on some mowers, I can actually put these bolts back through and I can test this without putting this air filter box back together. But on this mower, it's got really long these screws are really long and they actually don't go in far enough to test it without the air filter box on so one thing you've got to remember to do is get this breather pipe here on the back of this box you can actually push that on now you've taken this recoil cover off after you've fitted this on so what I'm going to do to refit this is I'm going to put this long screw in through here and through the gasket on the back you can see there first I'm going to do the same with the other side so this way I'm not accidentally going to kind of screw through the gasket and then I'm going to put it through here Make sure it goes through and I'm going to do 
just line everything up, push it right through the carb. In fact, I'm just going to get one started now, that one's gone through. I'm just going to get one of these started. So it holds it onto this mower. I'm going to tighten these up evenly. You can see there, everything's holding together. I'm going to tighten these up and I'm going to push my finger down the back of here and push this breather pipe back on. So all I'm going to do now is just tighten these two parts up. One thing I like to do before I start to show you this, before I tighten things up, is just have a look around before you start tightening things. Make sure, make sure everything moves as it should. See how everything springs about and moves as it should. Sometimes you get these rods and they're not quite through the holes right and nothing moves. And when you start it up it'll run like, um, it's like, like full speed. So just take a look at that before you tighten anything up. And we'll just tighten these two parts back up now. So that's all back together. I'm just going to actually get this cover, put this back on here. Drop that back on. Make sure everything's okay. Pull this recoil back around here, like this here. Drop that back on. Really simple to get in and just work on and everything. I absolutely love working on these Hondas. I actually recommended one of these on the website. It's uh, one of the eight best walk behind lawnmowers you, you could have potentially buy and have it last you a lifetime. I really do believe if you kept the uh, underside of this deck from rotting and services every sort of year or a couple of years depending on how much you use it. I do think if you bought one of these today, no matter how old you are, that one of these could last you um, the lifetime that you would need it to last. I really think they're fantastic, they're really well built, push along really well. And I always suggest getting one without a self-drive on as well because that's another thing over time that's going to fail. If you buy one you can manage without a self-drive, there's not much to go wrong. I often get asked the question, well, if the self-drive fails, I'll just push it. Well, that's okay until you want to sort of wheel it backwards to manoeuvre it and turn it round. And what you'll find then is the uh, the rear wheels lock and it drags backwards across your grass. And of course, you don't want that, particularly if it's uh, starting to try and cut wet grass with it as well. So that's all back together. I'm going to lift this off the table now and I'll try and fire this mower up. Right, so I must remember to do two things. I've done one of them. Push the spark plug lead back on here. And this here, I'll turn this fuel tap back on here. It often takes a few minutes to let the fuel go through on it, so I'll just let that sit for a few minutes. And then we'll fire this up, and hopefully I'll be able to take this up to full and start this up, and then take it back down to idle, and it should idle really well. Okay, so let's see what we get. And I did mention if it doesn't work this, I'm actually going to set the valves on this mower. And if you don't see a link in the card, you just look in the description of the video. If I don't need to set the valves, you can actually uh, look in the description of this video and there's a link to a video showing you how to set the uh, the valves on this type of lawnmower. Right, so let's see if this has solved the problem. As I say, I like to do these kind of things sort of first hand so you get to see a bit of reality of the problems that everybody faces. than it was but I've seen much better it may just be a case that this is uh, this lawnmower's a few years old and that's the best I get it but I, I actually think if I set the valves I can get this to uh, run a lot better than that so let's take this overhead cam cover off and let's set these valves so I've just taken this starter off again this recoil I'm just going to take this overhead cam cover off and take a look at these valves on here it may just be that they're a bit slack and they want tightening up I've done a detailed video on this and uh, to be honest I I've sold loads and loads of Honda repair manual DVDs and I've had over the last sort of seven or eight years I've sold thousands and thousands of repair DVDs and they are still on the website that repair almost for profit but I think at the end of this summer what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upload those DVD tutorials as they're getting a few years old now I'm actually just going to upload them to YouTube so people can see them but the reason I'm mentioning that is because on that video on that DVD there's a really detailed guide of how to actually set these valves on a Honda lawnmower in fact it's exactly the same model as this as well so 
we'll take this cover off and we'll take a look at these valves. All you've got to do to do this is just undo these four bolts here and take it out. Let's have a look at this. I've just taken these out. Just gently need to prise these off. Sometimes you just need to get a screwdriver and gently prise these off. Sorry for all banging about by the way. There's someone behind have just I think they're just putting a fence up. They've just moved in behind me, so I'm just gonna have to try and prise this cover off without bending it. There will be a little bit of a oil drop down from here when you get it out. I'm just gonna put something there to get that. So what you have to be careful to do is not actually bend this cover. If you just get a, a flat edge and put it down the back eventually, just really carefully just prise this away, you'll actually get this cover off. And you don't want to be bending too much of it really. It should just pull off. If you keep it the right way around like that, you can catch some oil there, save it going everywhere. And you can actually get full access to setting these valves, which is great. So I'm just going to pop that under there and let that soak up anything that uh, wants to fall out of there just for now. So to set these valves, what we need to do, just remove this spark plug here and we can find where top dead centre is. And from there we can set the valves. You've got to get the right clearance between the valve stem and the valve guides in here. So I've already undone that actually. Um, we'll take this plug out here and then you can actually feel inside and find where top dead centre is because if these valves are slack you won't be running as well as it should it can make a massive difference especially if you've got a lawnmower that's uh, difficult to pull over these uh, are generally really really easy to pull over these Honda ones that's why they're, uh, they're so well sought after especially with older people who struggle to start up a, a petrol lawnmower these pull over really really easily so I've actually wanted to just work out the clearances for these valves um, and this might seem a bit funny but I actually can't remember so I've actually had to go on my own website because on the Honda article I've written on repairlawnmowersforprofit.com I've actually uh, I've actually written all the technical data for these GCV engines, all the clearances, exhaust clearance, ignition gap clearance and absolutely everything. So if you look at that term, if you actually type in that repair lawnmowers for profit and look at the uh, this article here, at the top out of service, a Honda petrol lawnmower here, I'm not sure if you can see that anyway. But it's got actually got all the, uh, the clearances for these valves and this is what I want to check. Actually... Um, took the time to put this on here so I'll just scroll back down this article here and I can see here so the actual um, clearance is the valve intake clearance on this wants to be 0 0.006 of an inch and the exhaust side which is obviously the opposite side wants to be 0 0.008 of an inch so I'm going to get a feeler gauge here and I'm going to um, try and set these gaps and get them exactly right so this one wants to be 0 0.006 of an inch and this one 0 0.008 of an inch and actually they look really quite tight I've just put this at top dead centre and I'm not actually sure that I'm going to be able to get a gauge in here so let's give this a go. Now I've just had a quick look at these valves and I'm, I'm fairly happy that they're set well. If you, if you actually poke a screwdriver in here you can feel the piston and what you're feeling for is when this comes up to top dead centre you can see that it's set to go back down. At top dead centre there what you're looking for is a, an even gap between these valves here. Now if I drop this in here you can see that I've, I've got a nice drag on there that's the wrong one, that's six thousandths of an inch on the intake and I've got an eight thousand gap there on the exhaust so I'm happy that they're set okay just to show you in a bit better detail this little gap down down here all you need to do when you found top dead centre get your feeler gauge in at six thousandths of an inch there you can see just fits in, I've got a nice drag there it almost seems like I've set these and I haven't these are actually set fine and on this exhaust one that's eight thousandths of an inch there you can see so I'm happy that they're set well. So I'm just going to show you in a bit more detail what I'm talking about. If you look at this, uh, this actual gap in here, you can see here, when I found top dead centre, you can actually see this feeler gauge just goes in and it's just dragging nicely on there. So that's kind of like, it's already just been set. It's almost like I've done them myself, which I've not. And this one, the exhaust one, wants to be 8,000. And you can see, I'm just getting a good drag on there and I'm happy they're set really quite well. But if they weren't, what you need to do it's quite simple really you just undo this locking nut here and then there's an adjuster on here the square piece and you just turn it to obtain the correct clearance here and lock it up once again with this locking nut here and just test it with the feeler gauge that's all you need to do so I can't do anything else with that the only thing I can do to get it idling a bit better probably change this plug this looks a bit of a mess could have done that at the beginning I suppose but what's concerning me more is the amount the amount of um, scratches on this flywheel 
and this runs against this ignition coil here and obviously this is what sends a spark down to the plug and you get an even running so it could be that this flywheel scratch because I've never had one of these before that I've set the valves on and done the carbon that's not run evenly so I've maybe picked a bad example of this but I'm, I am actually concerned about how many marks there are on that flywheel and I'm just worried that this ignition coil is actually catching slightly against this flywheel could be just the way the brake comes on and off so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure this isn't actually catching. There's a really easy way to set this ignition coil. You've just got to move, see the magnets here, you've just got to move this away from the magnets and I'll back these two bolts off so it sits away from the flywheel and to get the correct gap which I've specified on the website you can do that but most people just use a piece of card like about a plain card thickness. I'm going to drop that in the gap and tighten it up against the card and remove the card and that'll give me an even gap between this ignition coil and this flywheel. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to undo this ignition coil just in case it is catching in case you never know what people have done with these to almost if people have had a play about the self real careful with that not to snap that off so you can see there it's not actually touching any magnets or anything like that nothing's pulling it back against the flywheel what I'm going to do is take a piece of card and I'm going to drop it in the gap down here you can see there and slide that there and I'm going to push this evenly back up against the card I'm going to tighten this back up evenly that way I've got an even gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel I know it's not catching, I know it's not touching the flywheel then as well so I'm going to just tighten that back up I'm not sure that that's not been catching this flywheel it might have even ruined these magnets which is why I don't get quite as good a spark as I should at idle rev so I've maybe picked a bad example for you here turn that flywheel here at least now I know that I've got a gap between this ignition coil and flywheel as well so you can see here I can see now I've actually got a definite gap between this coil here and this flywheel there and at that side so I know nothing's scraping against it now unfortunately apart from replacing this plug there's not a lot else I can do for this mower it may not run a much better than it did right at the beginning but it certainly is an improvement but what I wanted to say really is that this is the kind of thing you pay for when you when you get your lawnmower serviced if you're, you're not willing to do it yourself and you have a, a good quality machine such as this you play, you're paying for things like this checked and you're paying for this uh, the valve set as well and you're paying for the carburetor to be serviced and some of the gaskets replaced so if you wonder why sometimes it's quite pricey to get your lawnmower serviced it's because all this work does need doing from time to time so I'm going to put this back together I might just try a different plug in it as well and we'll see what this runs like but there's nothing more I can do with this but for anyone with a Honda lawnmower if you learn how to service the carburetor and set the valves like I've shown you there and especially just clean off the underside of this deck you can make one of these lawnmowers last a very very long time okay so I've just got this lawnmower um, off the bench and tried this now I've been actually running this with this cover off and I've actually kind of manually just played about a little bit in here with these valves and it makes a tremendous difference as to how this runs and I've actually got this uh, idling a lot better than it was before I know the carburetor's clean so I can't have a problem with that and um, I've got this idling as well as I can and it's just a case sometimes even if, if you go with the recommended um, valve clearances sometimes if you just have a little play about you can actually get these things uh, just running a little bit better so I've just what I've done is just undone this locking nut and I've just tightened this exhaust one up a little bit more I've just had a little bit of a tinker about and it, uh, it runs a lot better than it did it's not ideal running it well this cover on you get a bit a little bit of uh, oil going on the grass but it'll all grow out and cut so I'm going to put that cover back on and I'm going to show you how this runs I get some questions sometimes asking me what happens if I uh, want to set the valves and I don't keep putting this cover back on well the uh, the honest answer is it just makes a mess it just throws oil everywhere but you know I'm going to cut this grass it's going to grow so I'm going to start this I'm going to, I'll, I'll never ever suggest doing this because it's a uh, you're bypassing a safety feature but just to keep this mower running I'm actually going to just clamp the handle I'm going to start this up and I'm going to show you what it actually looks like when it's running don't ever do this and leave it unattended especially
So I'm just going to spend a little bit longer messing about with these valve settings and just getting this to run even smoother at low revs. It's still revving up and down a little bit, but you can see the massive improvement I've made right from the beginning when it wouldn't idle at all. And if you have a lawnmower such as this Honda one and you just service the carburetor and set the valves I've shown you there, check the ignition coil, it will really help as well if you put a new spark plug in, of course, as well. So if you do these things, if you've got a lawnmower that doesn't idle properly, it will help massively. And to be fair, it, uh, it usually helps a lot more than it did with that example that I've tried to show there but these are the key things that you can do to keep your mower running evenly if you set the valves when it starts to rev up and down and service the cab you'll go a long way to keeping your lawnmower for a long time and with one of these fantastic Honda Izzy petrol lawnmowers as well I reckon you could keep this lawnmower for a full lifetime I really do I think they're fantastic pieces of kit and I recommend them a lot on the website at repairlawnmowersforprofit.com you'd be doing me a massive favour if you could head over to repairlawnmowersforprofit.com and just um, take a look at the articles and the parts all that I've got on there that would really help me out and I'd appreciate that thanks for watching please subscribe rate leave a comment or whatever people do on YouTube nowadays thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time